Hello everyone! This is going to be a news slash tutorial uh, uh, section here. A little update, first of all, the Blizzard uh, fan video contest. I will, in fact, not be entering that this year. The deadline is April 19th, which is fast approaching, and I did some tabulations, found out that even if I had all my shots done, it was going to take me way more time to render them than I had uh, time for. So I'm going to take my time with it and finish up the film uh, present it on my YouTube channel later on, show you some tutorials on how I made the different characters in it, and uh, then enter the contest next year. So April 19th. Uh, by the time I found out about it, I had only one month to, to render every, uh, to animate and render everything. It just was not enough time. So that's that. Uh, in fact, today's um, I'm going to have you uh, tell you some news about rendering, which may help you. The other thing is uh, Blender. If you go to Blender.org, uh, Blender 2.57 was released. A little chameleon there is the kind of mascot for that release, and you're going to need that uh, to follow on with the tutorial I'm going to uh, uh, give you here. So you can just look at it and see what's new in Blender 2.57, okay? Uh, and then finally, here's a little bit of stuff, customized keyboard, add, some add-ons and stuff like that. So um, the final bit of news is uh, this really cool thing now called renderfarm.fi, which I imagine stands for Finland. Um, because a lot of Blender stuff is done over over in uh, Europe. So anyway, um, the concept is you uh, download a client, uh, create an account, download a client, uh, install the client on your uh, system and run it, and then basically when your your computer is not running, uh, doing anything, take those empty CPU cycles and share it amongst everyone who's on the network and turn all the computers in th that have this client into a giant uh, render farm, basically. So, um, also you can, uh, you know, upload your own stuff. You can upload your own uh, items, uh, your own work, and have use the power of the entire community that is on RenderFarm.fi to render your own stuff. So maybe you'll be able to, um, in fact, get onto the, uh, uh, you know, Blizzard fan film uh, section much earlier. Uh, I didn't have a chance to really mess with it too much. I don't know how it works yet. I'll keep you posted on it. So that is the extent of the news. So, now we're here uh, with uh, the new version of Blender, uh, Blender 2.57, which you will need in order to get the new lip sync uh, plugin to work. Actually, here's a lip sync plugin. If you go to this website, wiki.blender.org, I'll post the link there later. Uh, basically, here is the link, uh, link to it, and made by this guy, Yusuf Harfouche, and um, he's a nice guy here for making this, so go ahead and thank him for it. So basically, um, it takes the Papagayo, uh, let me pull up Papagayo here. Uh, if you saw some of my older tutorials, you'll see that I showed you already how to use this uh, Papagayo software to go ahead and uh, render out some lip sync. So basically, you load a WAV file into it, uh, you type in the text that uh, that WAV file contains, and then you see it will, it will break that up into kind of its, its uh, uh, the different phonemes, and then that you can go ahead and export that data into Blender now using this plugin, and it will automate the uh, lip sync for you. Okay, it, there's a, a little bit of setup, but I'll show you how it goes. So here is the original Papagayo, and um, okay, let's just play this. Oh, that is so lame. You will pay for your use of that appropriate dialogue. Okay, well, and here we're going to put it into Blender here. And it's, uh, I guess, appropriate that uh, the monkey here is is doing this because it's Mojo Jojo from the Powerpuff Girls is, in fact, a monkey, so... Oh, that is so lame. You will pay for your use of that appropriate dialogue. Okay. Oh, that is so Oops. lame. Not perfect, but uh, this basically, once I set up these phonemes, it took me about, like, yeah, I don't, know, I don't know, 10, 20 seconds to do this. So let's go ahead and start from scratch and show you how this is done. So I'll hit Shift-A and add a monkey. Okay. All right, and we'll go in to our modifiers and add some subdivisions so that he looks nice, and we'll smooth him out. Okay, and then um, what we have to do is we have to go in and create some shape keys. Uh, this is extremely simple to do. Uh, the only caveat, basically, that you might kind of throw you for a loop is you have to be in object mode and not edit mode in order to add the shape keys. You'll see that when I tabbed into edit mode, the shape keys were blanked out. Okay, you have to because when you edit the the mesh, uh, whatever shape key you have selected, that determines you know 
the position of, of the points in that shape key. All right, so basically, um, you just click on uh, shape keys, and it will add this uh, shape key for you called basis, which you cannot change. All right, this is the the model the way it is. So whenever you edit your original model, you have to edit the basis. Okay, so now when you tab into this, you are editing the original model. All right, so we'll tab out and we'll go back and we'll add again. And now we're adding the actual phoneme shapes. Okay, and you'll see here that in fact the key one here is has a little number next to it and a value so you can in fact animate this one alright and so we'll go through and we'll add a, a um, we'll name this one I think AI if you go on to the uh, website here you'll see it tells you exactly which phonemes that you need uh, to create alright and you have to name them as it says here exactly alright you have to name them like that okay so you create one uh, and then you tab in, select the phoneme you want to edit, and then you go ahead and start, uh, for example, um, manipulating the points here. And we'll just kind of move around. I mean, I'm not even trying at this point, but uh, so basically you create a shape, uh, a shape for it. Then you can see if it's working by moving the slider. All right. You create uh, another key. You call it something else. Tab in and move things around. All right. Okay, so now you have a couple different shape keys. All right. Uh, the next thing we need to do, okay, so we've created the shape key. Oh, um, I almost forgot. After you've downloaded the plugin, I would copy it to wherever you want, but I would copy it probably to your Blender uh, plugins folder. And then go into your file, user preferences, add-ons, and say install an add-on. All right. Uh, find the path to that file, and then it will show up. Um, you can you know, turn on in your add-ons, and then once you've done that, you'll know it's working because you will see, in fact, this new little menu here on the toolbar, T for toolbar, okay? And so it says Lip Syncer, and it's extremely uh, you know easy to use. Basically, what it does, um, anyway, we, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll export from Papagayo. Once we've done all our stuff, we'll say Export Voice. All right, I've already done this. I have, you'll, it will give you what's called a DAT file for data. All right, and you just go in here and you import that. You just go ahead and click on the import, uh, and then you go to wherever you put that file. All right. There's a few little uh, things here. Um, it'll say, you know, your ease in and your ease out and your hold. And if you just uh, hold your... Um, mouse over this, it will kind of tell you what each one does, all right? So uh, once you've done that, um, you know, I found that either an ease of the default three, ease in, ease out of three or two uh, tends to work. Uh, one is a little bit too staccato and anything over that seems to be a bit long. Uh, if you do have like long stretches in between, you can put this hold frame. Uh, hold, holding for slow keys means that he'll kind of slowly move his mouth down if he's not talking. Uh, may make it seem a bit more natural if there's kind of like a break in between things. Okay, and um, you know once you've uh, imported that DAT file, once you've created all all the uh, values you need for your shape keys, we've only created a couple right now. Uh, you can just click on plot keys, please, and then it will create a bunch of keys for you. All right, and um, then let me bring up the finished version I showed you. Okay, so as you can see here, if I select this little dude and go to our, our tab here, Object Data tab, you'll see I've already created all the shape keys I need. All right, I've labeled them accordingly. And then I just go ahead, I import that DAT file. I just clicked on uh, Plot Keys. You can see in this case, I have my E set to a different value and my hold set to a different value. You can just keep experimenting with this. Uh, what you do is just plot the keys. And if you don't like the results, just uh, select your object, go to your uh, graph editor. Everything should be all selected by default. If you go into your lip sync, they should all be selected. And you can just um, hit X to delete the keyframes if you don't like it and just try another uh, setting. You know, different ease, different hold, and a different key value if you wish. But um, you'll see you really don't have to really mess with it too much to get it to work. Okay, so let's go back to properties. All right, so. We'll just scrub back here and we'll just uh, hit play. Oh, that is so lame. You will pay for your use of inappropriate dialogue. 
Okay, uh, there's one more, uh, well, maybe one or two little uh, things to do left, all right? Uh, how did I get the sound to play uh, when I'm scrubbing through things? All right, so let's go to the um, video sequence editor. All right, and you'll see that I already have imported the uh, wave file in here uh, of the dialog. I'll select that and X to erase it. Okay, so all I gotta do is hit Shift A to add, and then I can just add a sound. And I'll just, you know, uh, browse for that sound effect, or that uh, uh, piece of dialogue, so to speak, uh, Papagayo, tutorial files, it's called lame, and then we just kind of drag it and into place. Uh, we were starting our animation in this case at frame zero. All right, and then we can scrub through it, and when we go back to our 3D view, and we play it, there it is. The other thing is, if you want to be able to scrub, like, for example, uh, in order to, um, you know, more accurately uh, decide what kind of phonemes and stuff you're going to uh, to use, if you want to uh, accurately scrub through that when you when you uh, drag through the time slider, uh, go under playback and check mark audio scrubbing. If you uncheck it, you will not hear any audio when you scrub back and forth. It can be very uh, annoying to hear the audio over and over again. So uh, you might not want to have it on all the time, but definitely when you're kind of scrubbing through and you say, well, where exactly does a certain uh, phoneme start or where does a certain word start, you can go in, turn on audio scrubbing, and then you can go ahead and hear exactly what is being spoken at the time. All right. So that's the basics of that. Before we leave the lip syncer, there's one more thing to let you know about, is that as you can see here, under the select mode, there's a dual menu here, and there's a thing called Blinker. And what it does is, if you were to create, for example, a new uh, shape key, and if you were to call it Blink, lowercase, all right, and then you just kind of, uh, control tab, by the way, will bring up this mesh select mode, then you can select vertex, edge, or face. And we'll just grab a bunch of keys here or a bunch of vertices, I mean. And I'll just kind of move over here and hold down uh, my shift and my option key on the Mac at least. And that'll let me select these loops of vertices here. Oops. And then I'll just kind of, I'm not, I'm, I'm just kind of doing this just as a demonstration, not to make it a proper shape key here. All right, so I created my blank shape. Looks kind of crappy, but uh, there it is. And so if I were to go ahead and uh, run the blinker now, say blink keys, please, what it will do is it will create a, a blink um, effect. I don't have to manually key. Uh, if you were going to key in a blink, for example, here, you would have to go ahead and uh, hover your mouse over the value, hit I uh, to insert a keyframe, scrub through a few frames, change the value, hit I again. Scrub through a few more frames, change the value, hit I, and now you've manually inserted a key. Of course, uh, you know, you have complete control over that. Uh, I guess the only problem is the fact that you had to go through several steps. You had to scrub, set key, scrub, set key, scrub, set key. So if you don't want to do that and you don't mind it looking a little bit kind of, uh, I don't know, um, well, maybe it looks a little bit robotic, maybe. But um, you can have the blinker do it for you. You can tell it uh, how many times you want to blink, how long, the ease in and the ease out. Uh, and the spacing is how, how many frames between each blink, OK? The times is the number of times it's, it's going to blink. So if you had a spacing of 100, that means every 100 frames, he's going to blink. That if you have a time set to 10, that means he's going to blink 10 times. So if you were to, for example, just press blink keys, please, you'll see that some keys over here were created. And if I keep dragging the uh, uh, the time slider in here down, you'll see that, in fact, way off here, off in the distance, he's, uh, he's going to be blinking. Every 100 frames or so, he's going to blink. Uh, the problem is, of course, Nobody blinks exactly every 100 frames, so it does look very robotic. But what you could do, I guess, is use it as a basis. Uh, once you've once you've done that, go into your graph editor, for example, shift space to maximize that, and you can go ahead and just take your your blink and just start messing with it here. 
you know, move some of this stuff over. But um, I personally don't find the blink uh, to be all that useful. So I just kind of leave it uh, on lip syncer, and that usually does the, does the trick. So uh, in summary, let's go through this again. Let's go to properties. In summary, uh, number one, uh, download the plugin from here. Number two is add the plugin to your add-ons, all right, by install add-on, and then make sure that the plugin that you just added is in fact checkmarked. It should be down here in somewhere in import uh, export. Okay, and uh, then go ahead and create your shape keys. Uh, click once to create the bases. Click again to create all the different shape keys, and then go ahead and tab into edit mode and edit each one. And then once you've done that, um, go ahead and import your DAT file that you created from Papagayo. Uh, if you want to hear the sound to make sure that it's, it's syncing up with what you're doing, go ahead into the video sequencer and uh, go ahead and shift A to, to bring up the add menu and add the sound. And then finally, under the lip sync uh, menu, go ahead and just hit plot keys, and then you should be pretty much uh, ready to go. Yep, yep. Okay, so that's the basics of it. And again, you know, it's not um, like, uh, how can I say? It's not Pixar quality lip sync, but if you had have a need to do something quickly and, you know, just need a start value or whatever, uh, and sometimes, as you can see, it it's actually does quite a quite a good job. So it's, it's a nice place to start out. You can always use it as a template, use it as a final version if you're pressed for time, and then you can go ahead and uh, manipulate the keys to your heart's content after that. Uh, saves a lot of work and can sometimes give you very good results. Again, you'll need the new version of Blender in order to do it. So I hope this helps out, and uh, good luck blendering.